There are substantive issues that have to... What, what are your own observations in the first place, so far? Let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. My colleague, uh, Efuakwa, mentioned that Ghanaians should vote for Mahmoud Baumia. I want to tell him on this program that Ghanaians, having been taken through this harsh economic situation, are not fools to repeat their suffering. A vote for Baumia is a vote for Ghanaians to repeat their suffering. Now, I have heard people say that it is only the Supreme Court that can interpret the Constitution. It's a lie. The Constitution regulates our lives, our daily lives. And indeed, each day that we go about our activities, we interpret the Constitution. So it's not only the Supreme Court. The only time that it is the preserve of the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution is, 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 is when there are rival interpretations. So let people know. I've heard this bandit around. So let the matter end today. It is only when there's a rival interpretation. And that's why the Constitution is written in plain English. You notice that the, the language of the Constitution is not legalese. Have you noticed that? Because it's meant for all of us. And we are to interpret this Constitution as we go about our activities. Mm. So let's assume that even here, your board members are meeting. They call your board, your, 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 the lawyer for your company to come and interpret a provision of the Constitution. Then the lawyer says that, board members, wait, oh, let me carry the Constitution to the Supreme Court and then they'll give it and I'll come and give it to you. Does it make sense? So I'm telling people who are always saying that it is only the Supreme Court. Today, let it end. Now, you ask a question. That what is the way forward? You, 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 the, the word you use was Consensus. Consensus. And he's gone all over. He has not provided any consensus. What's the way forward? He has not answered that question. But let me follow him to where he has gone to. <laughs> let me follow him there. Article 97, G and H. And this provision has been read. It's notorious. Everybody knows it. I'm not going to read it. Even Michael Quay also quoted it in that insert. Exactly. Mm. Now, the MPP should tell me and viewers where this provision talks about the future. Which, look at the wedding and tell me which of the words here talks about the future. Now, when they say that the Supreme Court has the exclusive jurisdiction to interpret the Constitution, it is not when people on their own decide to come out with a convoluted argument and say that that is interpre an interpretative issue. Are you listening to me? Mm. These are plain words. So, when they say the Constitution should be interpreted by the, uh, the Supreme Court, it doesn't mean that you, Roland, sitting in your house and then conjure an interpretative issue and say that the Supreme Court should now interpret it. Okay. And so, per this Constitution and Article 97 G and H, there is no interpretative issue at all. There's no confusion. There's no confusion. Give this to an, a, a, a junior high school child. And he will read and interpret this for you. Okay, so this is why... There's it, no confusion. It says that a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament in G. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member, or if he was elected 
a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins them political party. Full stop. Now, and the MPP constitution... No, 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 I'm not even going there yet. Okay. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of election to parliament, full stop there. These people that we are talking about... They've left. Has this caught them or not? Yeah, yeah. they've left. So sometimes when the MPP is talking, I, 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 I don't know. But let me uh, suppress my anger, isn't it? So that's the first one. Two. To join another party or seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. Has this caught them again or not? What is this? What is this about this MPP people? Sometimes eh, I, I wish we could just carve out some place for them and say that's their country. Oh, what do you mean by that? They are, you see, the way they behave. You catch them here, they do this. You catch them there, they do this. What is this? This provision, which is in black and white, does it lend itself to any interpretation? Does it? Where is the future here? Which, word, which of the words here talks about future? Synonyms. Let's go to English. Synonyms. Maybe which, they... which word here talks about future? Which word here talks about future? So, you see, let me exercise restraint and we'll do my argument we because... Remain in parliament. Uh, I didn't seek to remain in this parliament. I didn't seek to remain in, in, the, in the next parliament. Remain in parliament. Look, 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 look. Stop, stop what you are doing. How, how when you were that? talking, I was... Not happy, but I discipline myself. Okay, go ahead. Discipline yourself. You may not like what I'm saying. Now, you come up with your own convoluted interpretation and say, let's go to the Supreme Court. Article 115 of the Constitution is very clear on how Parliament conducts its business. And whether Parliament's business is open for any court action. It's clear. 115, read it. The way I read it, then people say that I'm putting words. 115, there shall be freedom of speech, debates, and proceedings in Parliament, and that freedom shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of Parliament. So it is this provision that the and majority NDC is is hanging on to and thinks that the Supreme Court has no business in this matter. It is this provision. Now, having dealt with that, those matters, let me deal with consensus. consensus. Because right now there's a stalemate, but Parliament is needed back. Mm. There is. We, we, have, we have to reconvene Parliament. There is. First and foremost, as an expert in conflict resolution, what you need to do first is whether the two parties are amenable to settlement. Because you can't bring parties to the negotiation table when they themselves are not in agreement. Particularly when they have entrenched positions. Do you see the positions as entrenched? And why? They are entrenched, but both sides know he has failed to answer those questions. So I'm now teaching him how to answer questions. Both sides know. Both sides know that the country must move forward. Isn't it? Isn't it? Both sides know that the country must move forward. Now, if you are coming to a negotiating table, mm -hmm. you don't come with an entrenched position. You must be ready to give and take. You must lose some, you must take some. Where are the contentions? The contentions are in two areas. One, who leads parliament and thereby doing government business? And two, whose number in parliament is the largest? So, so, who is majority in parliament? And then who is the one who will lead government business? What will government do if the majority goes to the NDC. That's the problem now. Okay. So anybody who is going into this matter 
must be ready to look at the positions of the parties, mm. their interests, mm. and their needs. Three, three areas. You, you, you've, you've brought a very important thing up. The Supreme Court gave an order. Mm -hmm. So once the Supreme Court has given an order, mm -hmm. we haven't heard a response from the Speaker. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is once the Supreme Court is given or has given an order, it means that everything returns to basics. No, that's another area. Let me use my knowledge of the law to educate people. Those who were saying that yesterday, only yesterday they went, two days ago they went yes, to Parliament. Yes. Because that, that's, I'm thinking. Those who were saying that the NDC majority should have moved away and go to the left-hand side of Mr. Speaker because the Supreme Court ruling subsists, got it all wrong. They went to the Supreme Court on Friday. Mm. Friday to Tuesday is how many days? Uh, three, four days? Four days. Four days. So when such orders are made, mm. Eh, mm. the status quo remains for the next seven days. Oh, so? Yes, seven days. Weekends. The seven days does not include weekends. The, when you are recording time. So from Friday, then we'll come on Monday, Tuesday, so, Wednesday, Thursday, yes. Thursday, Tuesday. Seven and days. Then, seven and then days. the next seven days will be um, Tuesday, the next Tuesday. Uh -huh. So seven days period, the status quo remains. Then the judgment or the ruling will take effect. So after Tuesday? After seven days. So, were there a majority in Parliament on that day against their conduct? Was their conduct against the Supreme Court? The answer is no, because there's a period of there's a, a period of uh, duration where the status quo remains the same. So that is an indication for those who think that the majority in in Tuesday's sitting shouldn't have sat at where they are. Mm. They also got it wrong. Right. Uh, Adam, uh, uh, Andy Adam says you are boiling, so drink water. 